Well, welcome again to Unlimited Treasure. Today we are doing academic writing. Academic writing. What everyone needs to know. Guys, this is so important. Very important. For as long as you are in tertiary, it's important that you do this. This is one of the reasons people would start their masters, even PhDs, and not finish and just give up because it's not easy getting the, the feedback that you didn't write well, you plagiarized, and all that. It is one of the toughest things um, to get used to at, an, at a later stage. But I suggest that you start practicing now. It is not difficult. It just takes some getting used to, right? So it is very important. Even if you're doing first year, if you start practicing this at first year, for every question that has more than 10 months, and you start really getting to understand how to write well, practicing how to write well, you will do well. By the time you get to do master's papers, research papers of any level, it will be fine. <clears throat> so please don't let it scare you. And guys, if you are listening to this and you have not subscribed to the channel, may I ask that you do. You just need to hit that subscribe button. It's really not difficult. It is very helpful with the work that I'm doing to assist everyone. And the more subscriptions, uh, the better it is for me, the better this work will be recognized, the better it will help other people. Remember, I'm not charging you for this, right? So please subscribe. I know that you view, and I can see by the number of views. Thank you so much for viewing as well. I just ask that you also just hit that subscribe button. And yes, feel free to share this when you're done with this clip and you find it worth it. There's many other people who are studying that you know. So please share it with them so that you know we can have a great group of students who will go in and transform our companies our government and all that we need transformed right like our communities right so i wish you all the best as we enter this um let's get into it <clears throat> So we'll quickly go define what is academic writing, the importance thereof, and just have an, a short clip uh, that gives a bit of an over, overview of what you can do and can't, right? So it's not a very long session, so let's stick it out and go for it, okay? So it is very important that we develop uh, sound academic writing skills. I have already mentioned really that it's important to learn this, guys. That's frustrating. I remember most MBAs, I know many people who drop out of their master's papers. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they are not smart. It cannot be that. I mean, you don't get there, but I think everyone is smart. It's, it's just that doing this research papers or doing your assignments because they require you to write with sound academic writing skills every question that is over 10 marks it is it is just not easy because you get a supervisor allocated to you and then they will look into your academic writing skills and do all these corrections and send back to you this feedback comments and you're like yo I already spent a month coming up with this and here it goes. It looks like I need another month or two. I mean, it looks like nothing I did was right. But that's how you learn. What I am saying, though, is that if you are not there yet, start now. The sooner you start getting used to this, the better. And this is a global standard. Whether you're studying at Verts, Gibbs, Mancos, uh, whichever college, Harvard, anyway, any institution that you like. When coming to this, we write the same way. Please, after this clip, 
go through your books that your institution gives you. They always give some sort of booklet and it, it links to something called Harvard referencing. We all use Harvard referencing regardless of institution that we use. So please find that booklet. If you don't have it, please ask your institution to send it to you. If you are able to, you can always also just download online uh, have a referencing, but find just the latest. It's the latest books. If you find maybe there's a 2014 and 2018 and 2019, obviously download the 2019. It is very important. I cannot stress the importance of this. Okay. <clears throat> so it's any type of, of, of writing style really used in formal assessment or publication. So if you're going to write any formal assessment, like your class right now or publication, you need to write that way. And that is why it is important. What we need to really, really know about this is it's a way of academic writing. It's a way of writing, right? So <clears throat> I think just to to give you a bit of an overview on what, how this it's like right after telling you the importance i've already just given you the importance of this your strong writing skills analytical skills even you can start writing papers for your organization you can start writing papers within your space it's it will give you that confidence. It will boost your creativity, your creativity and your confidence in writing and your intellectual development, your critical thinking, your objectivity. Oh, it will take you to the world. The minute you get to know, and, and there's never arriving, but the more you get better and better and better at it, the more confident you become to can produce uh, those papers. <clears throat> so it has some of those features the complexity of it, the formality, the accuracy, you really need to understand all these things, right? So imagine, I just want you to see this. Imagine I am with you somewhere and you give me critical information about your organization. And this information is not out there. And then another student maybe shared something with me because I was in a class with you. Then later on, there's a conference that you have to attend, but really you don't know who else is attending or attending it because you know the importance thereof. You get to that conference and I am the speaker. Being the speaker of that conference, at that conference, I stood just giving examples and I, I talk about your organization like I know this information myself I talk about what the other students said but I'm really not saying anything about the fact that I learned this from somewhere or my part-time lecturer I learned this from so so in essence I'm not crediting you for the information that I learned from you and guys I think this is of utmost importance you know, it is very important. I don't know why. Many people don't find it in their hearts to credit other people. And maybe that is one of the reasons that really people find academic writing difficult. Right? It is very, 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 very important. Let's just teach ourselves. Can we teach ourselves to credit other people? If I learned something from you, it actually shows, if I read something from somewhere, it really shows that I'm a reader, that I listen to people and I can even quote them. I mean, I can take the smart things. I mean, I can take something I learned from someone and make it part of my conversation. It takes a skill, guys. It takes a skill. So as you read those books, when you do your assignments, I mean... It shouldn't be very difficult to to say, according to Lerato and Pira, 2019, page 18, computers are defined as 1, 2, 3. Uh, Lauren and Gracious, 2018, adds to this definition 
by saying that X, Y, Z. I mean, it shows us that you have read. And of course, those people have written a lot of things. But the fact that you're able to extract what you want from the makes you exceptional. So let's learn that. Let's learn it in, even in our daily lives. If, if, uh, if you have to introduce, find, a, find two friends that you have to introduce and say something great about them. It, it will teach you something. Find something great out of people and pull it out. L let's just learn to credit because the more it becomes your way of life, you won't find it difficult to credit your sources. Okay. So... <clears throat> Some examples, I'm just going to go through some tips right now, right? Because really you need to go through that booklet that I spoke about to get to the deeper details. So when we're dealing with this, we just need to know that like now I'm explaining, I'm seeing a lot of things. In academic writing, <laughs> we need to be more precise and and, and shorter in our, in our sentences, you know. That is very important. When, for example, when you speak, you can say the cities in Switzerland had once been peaceful, but what changed when people became violent? But when you write, you know, I can I can say when when we speak, we tend to speak longer. I think that's the other challenge. Sometimes it's important to write whatever you're writing as you think about it, and then when you are done doing that. Go back to it and now check if it's written properly because our way of speaking is not our way of writing. And that includes those words like, wow, like fabulous. It's, you know, like, and there's many English words that are added these days that are not really English. And we speak them and we sound great. But when we are right, we need to be more cautious. Check. Violence changed the face of Switzerland. You know, like, just check how you write. It's important, guys. Whatever you wrote on the on your first attempt, it's not always the best. After writing, every time after you 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 type that text, I know text is different, maybe because the space is shorter, but sometimes some WhatsApps are longer because it's got more space. So just after writing, check what you write and and. And check if you wrote it the way you speak or you really wrote it in a right way. So it may not be important for your social life, but for academic life, it's very important. The same thing when you write a, a submission for work and all that. It's very important to type the first time and then go back to it and check if the way you wrote it is good. Okay. And then again, Let's let's avoid a lot of words that you know stuff like that uh, doesn't shouldn't you know no 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 let's let's not be general academic writing says if you know that democracy happened in nineteen ninety four twenty seven April <laughs> or whenever that was let's let's just use that time. People will take this freedom in South Africa, 27 April. You cannot just write and say, in the early 90s, if South Africa found, found its freedom, or in the early 1990s, you can't. It's, it's not according to which writer, which writer said that. I mean... What is the early 90s or what is the the early 90s could be between 90 and 94? Or like be specific. All I'm saying is if freedom was in 1990, be clear that it's in 1990, which date in that month. But again, you cannot say if it was in if it was in 1994, it must be 1994. If it was 1995. 1993 let it be you can't just say early 90s and if it is 1994 let it not be early 1994 if it's 1990 let it not be in early 1990 what is early is it january february march april may is it any time before june so we don't write like that basically in academic writing we become more specific 
you say according to this author, not that you should use the words I'm using, but you flow like that. You 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 cite wherever you got your information, you you become more specific, right? <clears throat> you become precise. Okay. You can't say many people. What is many people? I mean, we were taught in English that there's one and there's two. If there's more than one, there's it's many. So if you say many people died in in the Marikana massacre. What is many people? We don't write like that. You can say it like that, generally, but you need to be able to say it was X number of people, right? I've already spoken to the years. If it's 1970, let it be 1970, not in the 70s. The 70s is broad, okay? And let's be objective. Let's use fear words. Let's Let's just use nouns more than nouns and adjectives rather than verbs and adverbs. Academic writing, it tends to use nouns and adjectives. So now it means you must go and learn what is a noun and what is an adjective. But more than just a doing with a verb and adverbs, right? So just, just be aware of that as you, change, as you check your sentence. We need to be more explicit and because it's, it's really very important that we learn these things. It is very, very important. <clears throat> and if you are signaling an example, signal that you are doing, you giving an example. So these things are... It, it just shows us that we don't just write. I think the summary of this is that we don't just write. We become more conscious of what we are writing and we write well, right? And we become more accurate. The criminals steal what? Their money. What the currency. I know people sometimes speak. We interchange. When we speak, we interchange words the way we want. So when we write, let's just double check ourselves. Because sometimes not many people speak English like properly the way it should. I mean, you should be listening to this children, you know, young ones. And many people really, as we speak, we just speak anyhow and we sound good, but some of it is not really good English. So when you write, then you just need to step back and say, okay, let me recheck. Okay. It is assumed that the criminal was caught by the police. Hedging, right? It is certain that the police caught the criminal. So when we, we hedge, it simply means to make clear in your writing which stance you are taking. You see, sometimes you get students writing things like the student thinks, the student strongly recommends. Okay, we don't have to do these recommendations, guys. It's fine. We just have to pull all these different views and through hedging, you can impose a view, right? So you can show your stance uh, as well. And hedging is one of the ways you can, you can stand for something. I'm sure in these two sentences, you can see which one is better, right? Um, okay. And then it is really your responsibility, guys. You need to take responsibility for the claims that you make. It's your responsibility. If you say you took it from Lerato and Peter 2020, when we check it on that page, it must be there. And you, there must be evidence and justification for your arguments. Don't lie. Paraphrase and the way you summarize and reference. And there's a way you reference as well your, your booklets that your institution provides you. They they have even more information of how to do that when you have you are referencing your sources and at the bottom when you do the whole list of those in alphabetic form, how they must be if it's an a book how should you do it if it's an online article how you do it you know all that but guys please just one of the important 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 things which i could have mentioned in the beginning of this is that every institution has journal databases 
it becomes very important because I'm talking about paraphrasing, summarizing, providing evidence, and referencing your sources. Where do you get these sources? There's textbooks, but textbooks, some of them happen to not be updated very often and very fast. I'm sure you know the the complexity that comes with writing a book and then even after you updated the printing that goes with a lot of costs and effort but journal database you find that there's a book that was written in 2012 but the subjects that are addressed in that book let's not take it too far let's just say maybe in 2015 because when you do this try to remain within the five years I would say five, and maybe if you push it back seven, but the minute you would start going to ten years and beyond, it's 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 far away. I mean, if 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 for example you are referencing a book that was written in twenty twelve or twenty thirteen, now in twenty twenty, some things may have changed. A lot will 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 have changed. Actually, how many laws changed between then and now? But when you use the journal databases that your institution provide for you, I mean, there's the Emerald, there's the Google Scholars, all sorts of. So you, really, your assignment is to go and find out which journal databases exist in your institution and ask them to assist you on how to get to them, right? And how do you access which one in most cases they are free for students right so please do that then if you have an assignment and it's talking about a digital transformation <laughs> during the corona days okay digital transformation you just need to go you you then tap digital transformation and all these sources will give you a lot of information you'll obviously choose the latest with relevant information that you want or new ways of working. I mean, <clears throat> for example, if you are just going in your general database and choose new ways of working, I mean, new ways of working in 2015 is not new ways of working in 2019. So those are the things we need to look out for. That's why the more recent you are, the better. Okay. So please just be aware of those things. Take more responsibility. Make it your business to, to try and remain Try hard to remain within the five years, five to seven years, but don't don't just don't go far out. Of course, there are those people like Potter who came up with this, but if the model was way long time ago, it's fine. You can mention it and draw it, Potter's five forces model, and then bring it closer because since he did it in long time ago, many years before even some of you were born. Other authors have written about it. So just try and flow with that and find also people who wrote about it more recently, you know. But what I'm saying is I shouldn't expect an assignment that has a whole lot of information that is old. You can kind of tell us about this transport law, this HR law, which was passed in 1995 or in 2010. What if it changed, actually? So, guys, let's try and be more relevant. Get recent sources. And you have it in your general database sources that your institution provides. Every institution has it. So, please, it's a matter of not being lazy and finding it. If you're not sure, ask your student advisors, the person who helped you to register in that institution, your lecturer, just try and find out. But it is the actually. All right. So I think it's a, I'm, I'm just going to play you a short clip um, as we then try to summarize what we say and a few points as we are about to wrap up. All right. Okay, let's check this clip out. It I've, I've been talking about plagiarism, that if I talk, if, if you read people's information, if you read this document, read this book, read this journal article, and put those things like it's your source without really 
recognizing, the power of recognizing, like I was saying before, then it means you are plagiarizing. And it means plagiarism has a lot of negativity and it can even you can even be suspended from school for plagiarizing. You can be suspended, you can be stopped from doing taking further academic uh, studies. So it is very important, guys, that we learn to write academically so that we don't plagiarize. Plagiarism doesn't say don't take another person's work. It says, yes, you can go through that general database that was written by Lerato and Peter, by Treasure and G, by this and that. And once you have done that, just acknowledge that you learned that from there. But even as you write it, you have options to can code them here and there. You have options to paraphrase, you know, check what they said, put it in your own ways. But just because you are putting it in your own ways, does not mean that it's your words. You put in your own words, but you learned it from somewhere. Just recognize the fact that you learned it from somewhere. The sooner we get used to the scars, I think we will become better. And this is it. Once we just get to know how to read other people's information, other sources' information, be it a journal, be it a book, whatever academic material that you use, whatever that supports your studies, if you can do that, and put it in your own words, quotations here and there, and be able to recognize those people, your sources to say, this is my source, then we are set. The rest is just writing it and putting properly, perfecting this and that, but you'll be set to go. And guys, remember, as we do all these things, what is key is we flow, there must be introduction, body, and conclusion without you saying those words. But also minimize the things that break the flow, like bullet points. You, you can't be hearing a lot of bullet points. Every page is bullet points. They disturb the flow. So try and flow in an essay manner. Of course, maybe two, three pages down the line, then maybe there's some table that you speak to. Somewhere down the line, there's some bullets that you want to emphasize something. Or, but let's get used to just flowing in paragraphs, not so much, not too many bullets. Hey, And again, for your assignments, if it's more than 10 marks out of 10, cool. But if you see marks that start going away over time, please try and write in academic writing. The difference, I mean, exams are the same. It's just that you won't be telling us where you got that information from. You still flow uh, introduction, body, conclusion without us seeing those words. It's, it's a great way to write, but you don't have to worry about weight. You can just, you just put your points across. And of course, here and there, you'll put some bullets in the exam as well. But what I'm saying is the, the minute you learn to flow introduction body conclusion without saying those words and you write that way you get used to doing that in assignments you get used to doing that in in exams you get used to doing that in your research papers in your mbas or any masters any phd or doctoral study you are set it's, it's just a matter of if it's an exam then you don't reference it but it's still the same so let's learn it let's learn it Let's learn it. You can certainly do this. I tell you, it becomes better. And again, Harvard Referencing Guide. That book, check it. It's once it was it's given to you, keep it with you. Keep on it's 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 like the Bible. It's the book you have and keep going back to every time because you never arrive. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's check the clip.
wow and that was great that was it guys the c the links the link will be a booklet that you got from your school right from a tertiary institution they give you a booklet that says a lot about harvard referencing please check out that book ask them to give it to you you have a right to have it if you don't have it it's also available just google it and try and check out the latest but i really recommend that while you're doing that parallel to waiting for your book you must still be requesting that booklet that your institution has for you all right um so guys just something to note uh, from that clip they were only using the year right i know that right now harvard wants us to also include the page numbers so please include page numbers okay as we continue and wrap up um so basically we must organize our work very well and be clear in what we want to say all right organize our work well be clear on what we want to say be able to plan our work and planning that intro body conclusion is very important right um i'll not be reading all this for you but you understand that you need to really understand what if you are doing an assignment what is the question what are the expectations of a question be, before you then go online into your journal databases and do the research and as you write as you make your notes and organize your information again intro body conclusion without really seeing those words when we mark it's it's just quite great to mark work that is that flows very well so again don't be scared by all this we all start somewhere we all start somewhere so keep on practicing and and depending on whether you first year second year third year postgrad the way you penalize will be different at some point we'll understand a bit but it's growth it's Practice, 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 guys. They say take 10,000 watt. Yes. For you to get it right, you need to practice more than 10,000 times. So let's keep trying. Quick tips as we wrap this up. You know, I don't like my recordings being very long. <sighs> yes. If you're writing that assignment, I've said it earlier on. Write it the way you flow. After you've written it the way you're just flowing in your head, understand that that was more like your spoken language, but we need to see the written. So revise it to, to put it properly, okay? Uh, keep track of your academic writing process. Um, and guys, the tracking process should not take long, right? It's just few minutes, you know? If, if it's a research paper, Guys, even with assignments, I generally recommend that, for example, if you're doing an IT assignment, you be in the moment you do it, you finish it. Because if you're going to try do IT in the morning, then afternoon do HR, you stand a chance of even, sometimes we see it when we mark, you can see that this person question one and question three of the IT assignments were related, but because you didn't do them flowing in the moment, one after the other, you can't even use, you can't even note that question one was the same as question three. But if you flow, and this is, it goes very much into your planning. It is much better to to decide that Monday to Wednesday I'll finish my IT assignments, Wednesday to Friday I'll do my HR, whatever assignments you have. That way you are in the moment and you don't lose your train of thought, you don't lose your concepts and ideas and all that. All right. So it's I think for assignments that's how you can keep track of it. Also when you when you're doing a bigger research and masters and all that better to write something every day because we are people we forget okay um brainstorming if you have people that you can brainstorm with and all that 
it's important right what you know about your topic use those bullets this is when you are still brainstorming and your mind maps map your idea and all that brainstorming with yourself and if there's someone that is maybe expert in, your, in that space you may want to maybe meet with your other classmates to to try and understand some things so it's very important helping each other it's not a taboo, guys. Actually, it's the best thing you can do. You just gather your thoughts. If you have an assignment, you discuss and you say, okay, these are at least the points you must cover. After that, you are all going to cover those points, but in your different ways. So helping each other is a beautiful thing. Okay. Yeah, you can learn to write from wherever, when you're at work, when you're at home. If you happen to be in a taxi or a lift club or a train, or you can put some of the things down, you know. Um. <laughs> so, guys, help, help, help. Guys, I don't know of any journey that does not require another person. In life, You are, if you're going to be great, you'll need another person. The sooner we accept it, the better. So, don't submit an assignment that was just you, your thoughts, and you wrote everything down, and you know, talk to someone, and you can see even as we mark, we can see if as if if someone was a silo, because you you see that a whole group of people are going in a certain direction, and then this this one or two people who are just going their own direction. Guys, it's important. Let's let's get used. To, don't don't be scared to ask for help. It's actually a great thing to know what you know and know what you don't know. Most people don't always know what they don't know. In terms of proofreading, of course, if it's an assignment, uh, if someone, I think for assignments it's tricky because not everyone is is honest. If you want another student to proofread your work, they can proofread it in your presence. Don't I don't su suggest that you send another student to assignment and say proofread. <clears throat> yeah, it's tricky. If the person is not as honest as we sometimes think, sometimes think people are, they may take your work and you find that certain portions of your work are exactly the same. And if lecturers pick that up, it's your word against hers, you know, it's, or he, he is, you know, it's tricky. Proofreading, if it's not someone from your house, or maybe a colleague, yes. But if it's someone that you're really studying with, uh, be very be very careful about it. If you have to get to a point where you want a person you are studying with because you are close enough to proofread your work, please just open your computer, let them read through it. It's fine. You don't think the fact of the fact that they'll see how you've done things. They can see it, but when they go write it, they're not going to write it the way you did, as long as they don't have a phone to take pictures of that. They want. We 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 all think different. Okay, it just it's just a tip that it's, it's an important part. Um. Yeah. So you choose a topic, then you organize, you write, review, and reverse. This is more when you are choosing a topic for your research. But generally, if you are writing an assignment, you still know the question, then you still need to organize, write, review, and reverse either way. Right. Then this is more your reference list. At some point, you, you're gonna need to have the reference list and ensure that is is done well. Um, please, when you do your references, guys, use a lot of journal articles, please. Please, please, please. Whatever paper you do, let there be more journal articles than anything else. It is very important. And. It really helps. It really helps because those journal articles, there's a lot of exceptional people who are doing this writings and they take their time and it's more recent almost every year there's a topic on that. So please try and rely on that the most and have other things as support. Yes, you use a book, but what are the chances of you finding a 2015 to 2020 book in your space? You know, to support those books, use a lot of journal articles. We are coming to the end. As we wrap up, again, I do not know if you found this. I believe that most of you will find this very beneficial. 
If you have found it beneficial, please subscribe to the channel. I know that you have viewed and I will see that you have viewed it. But as it ends, please just go back to the top where it says subscribe and click on subscribe. Right? I see there's a lot of views. We already have over a thousand views. There's a lot of students really coming in and looking at these things. The views should show that you are really learning from these things. The views show that you and some of you are interacting. And of course, some of you happen to have my email address because you happen to be my students and you're able to send those emails and get clarity and all that. I truly appreciate that. It's about you. The only part that's about me and the future is you subscribing. If you have not done so, I ask that you do. Click on subscribe. And that contributes to this channel being more valuable now and the future because a lot of great things will come. So that the, the best thing you can do to plant to this channel is clicking on subscribe, basically. It's called Unlimited Treasure. And whatever material you find useful, please do share it with others. I really don't mind. It's about us. I mean, I'm trying to build people who will be better than all of us. The future must be greater than the past. Always it can be. So we must really do our best to assist. I'm doing my bit. Please do my bit. Because even next year, the information about academic writing that I've said today will not have changed. So if someone views this in 2020 and 2021 and 2025, yes, they'll be evolving but some of this information will remain. I really thank you. I treasure you very much. Please do subscribe. Have a great day. Have a great year. And do check out for other recordings within this channel, Unlimited Treasure. Whether it's about IT, whether it's not about IT, I do a lot of coaching, so I have other recorded clips within the channel. They can guide you on your time management and how to set up a routine because there's so many things that we do and we don't know how to do them all. So there's other clips, just keep on scrolling backwards, learn some of these hot tips and investment tips and many others. Thank you so much.